Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money and Investing Show. This week we are looking at the subject of CPD, Continual Personal Development. You may for a bit of a surprise here because it's not just down one channel. We're going to look at this across a lot of aspects of life, but most importantly, as always, we're going to bring this back to how we can help you generate better returns on your money and investments. So we'll see you in the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money and Investing Show with me, your host, Andrew Baxter, and as always, my offsider and co-host, Mitchell Laurentiu. Pleasure to be here, Mr. Baxter, even though we have Paul o. Ralph Loren versus Tommy Hilfiger today, we actually have quite an interesting topic on the cards. It's one that you and I have to endure each and every financial year. It's also one you can apply in your personal life as well, and that is continuing personal or professional development, CPD. CPD, everyone's favourite subject. Was it? One, I think it was Macquarie Bank got nailed by ASIC for having the Penske file in that place. Remember the person the file around? The Penske, that's a Seinfeld reference, is it? It's, uh, I think it could be actually. Yeah. There you go, there you go. It's, look, no one likes doing CPD when you work in finance, but it is the unfortunate reality of what we do. From a personal perspective, though, it's actually a hell of a lot more interesting and really beneficial. Look, it, it's essential. We do it in finance and a lot of industries do do that because it ensures that you're keeping your skills sharp, that you're at the cutting edge and you're better able to advise clients. So, I mean, that's ultimately what it's there for, but we're not going to get into the industry of CPD. What we're going to get into is how you can use this personally, that continual personal development in terms of your skill set. Very, very important, whether it be in trading or whether it be in other things. So what would be your definition, AB, of CPD from a personal perspective then in that case? I think... You know, it's where you're constantly seeking to acquire new skills or grow as a person. You know, it's, it's very interesting over the years, you know, and, and not so much at the moment in the um, in the non-traveling around world that we live in. But I've done so much work with Tony Robbins, been on stage together numerous times, and Tony always talks about, you know, personal development is not changing who you are. It's helping you become the best version of you. And I think naturally as human beings, a lot of us have got that inquisitive nature. We're always looking to learn more, pick up some new skills, um, a, a greater understanding of how and why things work, whatever it may be across a, a wide range of gambits. And look, you go through a lot of different chapters in life where new skills become important. More recently for me being a farmer now, being able to take my chainsaw apart and tighten the chain or sharpen it, something <laughs> I never expected to A, learn how to do, or did I have any interest in it because yeah, living in the city of London, there's not a lot of call for walking around with a chainsaw unless you're Patrick Bateman, I suppose. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but so, you know, the reality of it, circumstance change and it prompts you to learn new things. And when it comes to investing or other parts of life, I'm sure we'll talk about constantly expanding, deepening your knowledge, albeit for the right reasons, very, very important. And just for the benefit of our listeners, you've certainly got the authority to be commenting on this topic. You've been a professional trader, correct me if I'm wrong, AB, for 28 years now in the market. You've got a beautiful family. You've also done very well out of your investing. And I know working with you closely for the last sort of three or four years, mm. um, developing yourself as a person is something that I've picked up from you mm. very, very well. But stark as it may seem, you're either growing or dead. It's as binary as that. And it's so easy to tap out and, and, and I think if you're success driven, particularly whatever your definition of success may be, and we're not talking about dollars and cents, it could be about buying time back, it may be, it could be a whole raft of different things that we've talked about you know, in previous podcasts. But if you're driven by success, uh, that, that desire to open another door on the advent calendar, to see what's behind it, to see what's involved, it, it is a natural thing to have. Uh, you know, if you take in your example uh, in your life, I mean, you're an incredibly fit man. Um, but the way your fitness is has changed just in the time I've known you. When I first met you, you just finished playing AFL, I think, at the Gold Coast Suns. Mm -hmm. They can do with you playing again. I know, they training. need it, right? And, and, and so a lot of the kind of training you're doing was explosive explosive strength, which is essential for playing AFL. And if I look at the way your somatotype has changed and the type of training you do now, as you're getting older, it's probably more stamina related. You don't need as much bulk on, although you do it pretty rich. Um, <laughs> and, and, and you go from there. So even in something that's so small as fitness, the subsets of what sit within there are the same. If we're talking about cooking, and this I think is where companies like HelloFresh and, and, um, and so on have done so, so well, uh, in that most people are in a routine with what they cook at home. And so having something that's different that gives you some variety opens the door to wanting to learn more. That's a different type of food. I quite like that. Go online, find a recipe, try something new. So even something as bland as maybe cooking where you've got your set go-to meals, 
if you're actually interested in that, you, you push yourself and learn new things. So this, this applies to so many things. It's a human need, and that is growth. We have to be growing as people. And, and to add to that, it doesn't mean that what you're currently doing is incorrect by any means. No. They, the old saying, don't fix something if it's not broken. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Right, but and you can always be getting better, right? That one, oh, if it's not broken, don't fix it, said the person with their arms folded <laughs> uh, that hasn't really done much. And a really good example of that, you know, if, if that maxim were true, we'd all be driving around in a Morris Minor or a Mini. Here's a great car. <laughs> so Isaac is again, it's a designer of a Mini. Here is a brilliant car. Does so much for so many people. And if it's not broken, which it wouldn't be, a good car, don't fix it. And to this day and age, we'd all be in that. But we're not because technology and development and expectations from people have moved on considerably. And so people like Elon Musk are able to set the pathway with a car that drives itself, that's green. Okay, so things change. The, the, the Morris Minor or the Mini weren't broken, but thank the Lord, that's not all we're stuck with to drive. So that evolutionary process is key. Just because you're moving on doesn't mean to say what was there in the past is wrong. You know, take a VHS video, absolutely amazing in its time. Now, remember, I just about remember the time when Betamax and VHS were sort of going at each other. Betamax was the, the loser in that particular battle. So VHS came out and said, oh my goodness me, look, you can watch stuff on video at home without needing to go to the movies or, or watch the three channels that were available on TV. And then, of course, came DVDs and then Blu-ray and, and, and on it goes. And that doesn't mean to say that watching something on a VHS is such a bad thing, but it's nowhere near as good as watching something on Blu-ray. Totally, and you can apply the same laws to yourself. Mm -hmm. And often, AB, we talk about the situational factors which can cause the onset of this, and they can be both internal and external. Okay. So, Let's break these down right now. What are some of the factors that might cause you to want to CPD yourself? Okay, well, let's, should we bring this into the, like the investing context now? Because we can talk about a whole raft of different life experiences, let's do it. but let's bring it into the investing space. So, you know, if we talk about some of the, the factors that can shift, maybe you move into retirement. And so you've got more time available to you to look after your investments. So there is a major situational change and you may go then from having a fairly passive approach, which you've used for a number of years. Maybe you've had a financial planner and a series of managed funds or exchange rate funds, whatever it may be, or maybe a blue chip share portfolio. All of a sudden now you've moved into retirement and you're not banging in the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week that you may have been doing when you were working. You've suddenly got this time to fill up I've always wanted to see how shares work and I want to get a bit of control back and dip a toe and have a bit of a play account and oh, that's actually quite interesting, it's quite stimulating, I might get a bit more money but I probably need to learn what I'm doing, get a couple of books, watch some stuff on the University of YouTube. All of a sudden that interest has peaked and, and, and then you set about getting into a more structured type of education which is obviously what we provide. So there's an example just by virtue of having more time. Um, equally it might be that you have more money, let's say for argument's sake you've inherited some money from a loved one. Uh, you know, great, uh, great aunt Mabel left you the cash and luckily she left the housekeeper the cats. And, and so <laughs> you've got the coin and all of a sudden you've had thrust upon you, you know, $2 million that you never expected in your lifetime. And with money, and this is a hugely important thing to understand, there's a level of responsibility that comes with having money and that's called stewardship of doing the right thing, particularly if it were gifted to you. And so if you've had no skill set in that space of looking after money and suddenly you've been thrust two million bucks to do something with, it's probably good to get on that pathway to start to learn what your options are. It may well be talking to your financial advisor, it may or may not be the best option for you. It may be getting involved with some direct investments, whether that being properly or within the stock market. It, it may well be setting up a small account to dip it. So all of those things, all of a sudden, something that you've never had the money to do, but now you have, oh, if I had the money, I'd love to get in the stock market. Boom, now you've got the money, but before you do it, you probably want to learn a bit. Sure. So there are two examples where um, there's, there's some external factors that perhaps have shifted internally. And, and, and this one is a little trickier, Mitch, because internally, if we're inquisitive, growth-orientated people that are success and results driven, as you and I are, there's always another level. And you're always going to be in search of that. And, and here's a huge word of, or, or example of caution to our followers, our listeners on this uh, broadcast. And that is don't get into the habit of chasing the wind. There's always going to be something bigger, better, faster, stronger, whatever there might be. And, and it doesn't stop. So you've got to have an idea of what your end game really looks like. That doesn't mean to say when I get there, I'm going to stop. But at the same time, you've got to get to that point and know what you're actually aiming for as opposed to this continual quest for the best investment strategy or the best training routine or the best knock your socks off meal around the stove or what the best car is going to be because what your definition of best is is going to change in the investment context 
the obvious one that I see a lot of new people that are new to markets looking for is what is going to offer me the best return? But it's not just about the best return, it's also where's the volatility of return? What is my risk to get that return, for example? So if you've just been gifted a couple of million bucks, you go, oh, this portfolio, this managed funds delivered 93% this year for its clients, I'm gonna invest in that because that means I'm gonna make 800 grand out of my, um, you know, out of my investment this year. Um, that may not be the best thing for you if it's a really volatile investment that is in SPAC warrants or something that can really move around. <laughs> And, and all of a sudden, the goal that you had was based on the wrong thing. So there's, there is a bit more to looking at what's best for you. It's a question of personal taste and fit. You know, why do you wear those shoes? Why do you drive that car? Why do you have those investments? Because hopefully they work for you personally. Sure. And as you mentioned, not chasing the wind is a huge factor. We all want to be better. Yeah. Uh, and particularly with our investments, we all want more for lower risk and we want the best strategy. You've just got to have a plan in place to get there methodically. Otherwise, any road will take you nowhere, as one, as one man once famously said. <laughs> How do you actually do this, AB? How do you really develop your skill set to continue on to get better? Is it a matter of self-examination and then a plan thereafter? I think self-examination is, is massively important. Um, we talk about it in our money and investing journal system each, literally each week. We did a podcast on this too. There you go. So uh, that's a great reference point for people to go back to. Um, you know, we're doing it weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually is a terrific way of seeing the year that's just gone by, has it worked in the way that you wanted it to? Or the week that's just gone by, has it worked in the way you wanted it to? And if not, what are the things that you can change about that? If you leave it too long, you know, last year wasn't a good year. Well, where did it go wrong? I don't really know. It just didn't get me where I wanted to get to. You've got to be far more specific. So that regular review, date night with your money once a month is another example of that, but certainly regular reviews. So self-examination, if you're in the investing and trading space, and, and the key thing here is, if you're doing something, even if it's not working, if it's really working well, you think, well, why would I kill it off? You know, what's not broken that you don't need to fix? That, that, that we've just dealt with. But if it is broken and it's not working, don't just throw it away. I think you've got to dive a little bit deeper and do a post-mortem on it and say, well, why isn't this working for me? Particularly when you see it working for other people. Okay, and that's really, really important. What are you doing differently? And it may be that you know, you're not executing the strategy properly. Maybe let's take an example where you're trading something in the US market and rather than sitting a flyer to place your orders in the options market, you're just putting limit orders in, you're getting really bad fills. And I appreciate this is a little technical for people that aren't in that space, but by virtue of you being fairly hands off with it, the performance isn't gonna be that good. Lazy trading, Lazy right? trading. Whereas if you put a bit more time in, you probably get a better result. And that might be the difference between someone that's making it work very well and someone that isn't. It may also be a personality type where your decision-making process based on your personality is slower to respond. That's not always a bad thing. So if you've got someone that's a socially driven personality type versus someone that's a recognition or achievement driven, a socially driven person is gonna be slower to make the decision, but they're gonna follow the trend beautifully, but they're probably gonna be a bit late getting out just because their natural disposition, their DNA in terms of their investment personality is such. So you've got to play to where your strengths are in that space. If you're a security driven person from a personality perspective, that doesn't mean to say you're a scaredy cat. What it means is someone that's going to be exemplary at following your trading plan. You just got to make sure that you get somebody else to put the plan in front of them and a plan that works and they will follow the plan and probably make more than anybody. Meanwhile, the recognition person will be running around going, oh, I developed that plan for them. <laughs> but they, they made it work because their disposition was such. So you've got to explore why it hasn't worked for you. Did you detract from the plan or you just simply, and I'm going to use luck, um, maybe you're just really unlucky with your timing that you put all your money into the stock market two days before September 11, or before the crash we saw with COVID or before the GFC. And that just comes down to, it's bad luck. Unfortunately, and that happens from time to time. And I think when the going gets tough, baby, because continuing your personal development isn't easy, it's gonna require some soul searching. I think the really big question we have to explore here is, here is finding your why. Mm. Really, Absolutely. what are you trying to achieve? You're trying to make some more money out of your investments, well, is it for you, mm. so you can party, is it for your family, is it for yeah. a new car? What is your why, what are your thoughts on that? I think that's, it comes down to any decision, what is your reason why for it? And yeah, if you run a company or a business of any sort, you know, having a vision and values and a mission statement, for example, is that, that that's your why as a business. And a lot of people just want to jump headlong in, let's look at the, how the business can operate, how can we make more sales, what do we do, what do we price that? But those fundamental building blocks make any decision in a corporate really easy. Uh, you're gonna make a fairly hard decision. You go, well, is this 
decision align with what our vision and values are, or does it conflict with them? And if it conflicts, don't do it. It's as simple as that. It's a really binary process. So spending the time to build that out in, in a business context is, is essential. Likewise, you know, when it comes to what you're doing personally and what your motivation, your reason why is, um, that will be very massively, and we've gone through this again in some of our other more personal development orientated um, podcasts, your motivation for why will change over time. That's something else to be quite minded of. And you know, maybe an external factor has come in to make you revisit your why and what you're doing. So if we bring this into, again, back into a little bit more of a trading context, and this is something I'm going through at the moment. So you know, for a lot of our, uh, our audience, our ecosystem, one of the things they may have noticed, I've stepped back from a couple of the, 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 the more high profile things within our business, specifically the weekly classroom, which I know you've done a great job of, of taking the reins on. Thank you. The newsletter uh, and a couple of other areas. And part of the reason for that, I needed to create the space um, to be able to focus on this particular personal development thing I'm doing at the moment. And that personal development thing, my motivation for doing it is both selfish for me and my family, but it's also quite altruistic for our clients and our broader audience. Sure. So it's all been went across the board. And, um, and I've needed to create space for that. And two, two of the specific things on there, one is, is a new product that we're developing at the moment in the exchange traded fund space. And the other one is, is the mothballing our US business, both of which have been quite time consuming. I need to be both the ETF product. Um, as I've gone down that rabbit hole, um, what I've looked at with my trading as it exists and then what I'm trying to build out as a model, I'm not saying this is a better way to go, but for me, given some of the internal and external factors in my life, it's becoming increasingly appealing. So for example, my personal life, my wife and I just had our fifth child a few weeks ago, so our house is effectively 20% busier. Our ducks had 10 ducklings today, by the way, too. So it's not a bad effort. Not a bad effort. You've got some work to keep up. <laughs> I don't think I'm even trying <laughs> um, So, you know, our house based on the kids is a little busier. I'm sure it will help, but you know, the reality is it's a little busier. My uh, uh, sleeping arrangements in terms of being up with feeds, my wife's doing an outstanding job as she's done with all of their children on that, but I'm still getting a disrupted sleep, so I'm not getting up as early in the morning. I'm living in New South Wales, and this is living in Queensland, so daylight savings and the fact that there's all this sort of external stuff, and they're not excuses. These are different things that when I look at it, I think, okay, I want to try and optimize, chase the wind, with my trading as much as I can, but I've got these external factors coming at me that I need to take into account to say, if I don't respond self-examination, if I don't respond to those external factors, it's gonna have a detrimental impact on what I'm doing over here at the moment. That's the sort of post-mortem of crunch time to make a decision, you go, okay. So you go to your values and go, what can you do about it? And I'm very fortunate that I've got you know, a large, deep encyclopedia and almanac, if you will, of trading experience over the last 20 years. And so it's like, okay, this works okay, but I wanna split test this now and, and run something in parallel with it to see, given the external factors that are coming my way, I can make this even better than what that currently is. And that's driven me into that particular pathway, and I've shared this with you know, probably four or five of the personal mentoring clients that I work with, um, because it's been appropriate to the journey that they're on as well. Sure. And it's something that coaching is a two-way process. You learn from your clients as much as they learn from you. So it's been great to have that sounding board to, to sort of run this through real time with clients. And the net outcome of all of this is gonna enable me to absorb the external things that are coming at me and turn them into a different style of trading I'm not going to stop this. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, this is working nicely, but this could work better. I'm not going to turn it off. I'm going to split test and work the two together and see where I start to not only get a different monetary response, because remember, it's not just about the return. It's about how much engagement I get personally, because I'm always looking for a new challenge in the investing space. I've done a lot, and I'm always looking for a new challenge. And sure. To see what that does for my risk profile on my trades, what it does for my overall returns, what it does on my time commitment to managing my trades how I can mold it into family life with different types of um, disruptions in the house, <laughs> let's put it that way. And then as I get this working, given what my personal values are in terms of wanting to share my skills, how can I put that on a silver platter and push it out to our clients? So there's an example of CPD where we've gone through and talked about in the investing space, there's something that already works, but there are other things that are coming at me that are possibly the catalyst for wanting to change it. And the net benefit from that, the reason why, is not only to help me and my family, 
but to be able to get that on a platter so that our clients can benefit from the work I'm putting in there. And man, I've gone deep in that rabbit hole. It's been really, I've really, really enjoyed it. It's probably one of the more enjoyable things I've done for a while. I know you have, and I know we've been talking about that throughout, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been great to see that well, for you. Take, take it back, I mean, you and I were at lunch 18 months, 19 months ago and sketched this out as we an did. embryonic idea. So what do you think of this? And you get out some stuff and thought, okay, and, and this is just taking that, breaking it apart, and then putting the whole thing on steroids. And you know, the net outcome is, Everything comes from an idea. And this is why it's so important to be part of a, an ecosystem like what we offer with, uh, with our operations, but to have people that you communicate with. And that's one of the hard things with isolation. Uh, if you've been in lockdown, unfortunately we're starting to see our cities and states come out of that, that you haven't had that ability, not to have a Zoom to talk about it, but that casual conversation, paper tablecloth at the restaurant, no, we're just writing all this stuff out <laughs> and people are like, what are you writing there? our favorite thing to do. And all of a sudden, a casual conversation comes a concept which turns into an idea, which very shortly is gonna become a, 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 a totally revised finished product, which I think is gonna really add massive value to our community. It's a great example of how that process of examination goes to creation, goes through to idea, to product. Mm -hmm. uh, and from a business perspective, we, we hope it'll work quite well. We are certainly confident in that, mm -hmm. and it's a really good proxy for how you can do it personally. Mm -hmm. I guess, A.B., the, the pursuit of, of perfection is unattainable, but it's certainly the, uh, the the pursuit of that that's the noble part, as a great man once said. Alan Watt, for anyone that's uh, looking yeah. to dig up some quotes, your favorite philosopher is. And, and, and it is noble, and look, there's nothing altruistic. I was, I'm, a, I'm an only child, so I'm supposed to be selfish by deficit, <laughs> my, my, my natural disposition, I don't think I am. But um, yeah, and, and, and my reasoning for wanting to get into that was quite personal. But like anything, if you go back to what your overarching reason why is, why do you do stuff? This isn't about money, it hasn't been about money for me for a long, long time, I'm a blessed man. What it's been about is what, can, what more can we provide with our clients to be able to have a more straightforward, less time consuming, potentially lower risk, potentially better performing, engaging investment strategy that's not as complex to understand and ultimately it's gonna give them the touchdown where they want financially in life. Uh, and they're all the things that are in our vision and values as a business, it's very, very easy to do that. And it, it has, it's from a purely selfish personal development point of view, uh, and my wife is like, like, man, you seem you know, pretty excited at the moment. And I said that, and I've been sort of locked in my office. Um, I put, do not disturb up on the door. Um, Bunk it down. With five kids under six, do you reckon they read that song? Yeah, and the no. two oldest ones can, can read, so they know what it <laughs> says, but they still want to come in. And that's great, that's all part of it. But the, the reality is that learning journey, it's rather like, um, um, what are the dolls, the Russian dolls? The babushka dolls. Babushka dolls, right. We open it up and there's a smaller one inside, and you keep opening it, and there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And that, that actually has got me more motivated than anything because I've sort of been down that rabbit hole thinking, okay, this is cool, I'm, this is really different to what I thought, or yes, I can see how I can harness that, that makes sense to what I believe. And then it opens up another one, and there's another smaller, and, and there's another one, and then another one. And so I've gone so deep with this to, you know, we're really playing at the micro level. And you go, man, this is just incredible from a personal growth perspective because I have been in markets for an awful long time, yet I'm still able to learn better ways of being able to play it up and deliver lower risk adjusted returns for people. And so my job now is to articulate the complexities of this so far three month odyssey that I've been on and put it into a bite-sized ABC that people can follow without needing to know anything about markets. We're very, very close to being able to launch that. But again, it just comes down to that desire. I don't need to change anything. My trading works very nicely, thank you very much, as it has for thousands of people around the world. But just because it works really well, I don't think I want to drive a Morris Minor. Let's see what else we can do with it and see if we can take something even better to market, which is exactly what that. Yeah, topical, it's, it, that's CPD. I know we're talking a little bit about what's going on within our business, but that just happens to be the real life case study. And that's exactly what our viewers love, AB. So thank you very much for your insight today. Cracking episode, certainly a lot to learn out of here. Very much appreciate it. Always a pleasure, Mitch. Thanks very much. There you have it, guys, CPD. Make sure you give us a review and a rating so we can get the word out there to more people, and we'll look forward to hosting you next week.